Hi guys, Andy and Spoken Label back in the house and on Zoom again today. We're over up to Birmingham today and I, I, one thing I like about Spoken Label is, is recommendations. I've just done a podcast with she had and people who have heard by now from Rosie Willoughby and Rosie came up to us not long after this podcast saying she's kind of representing or helping out with this lady we've got on Zoom today with her new album and asked me, oh, she thought, you'd get on well there, Andy. So, okay, there we are then. So, Katie, do you want Hello. to introduce her? But, uh, introduce her. Uh, yeah, you're a tongue in my mouth yeah. now. <laughs> Start that, I'll try that again. <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Tell who you are, where you come from, where you are now, and if you can remember what started off all your music, I will take it for Sure. Now. Yeah, so my name's Katie Rose Bennett. I'm a songwriter and singer. I'm originally from Oxfordshire, a little village uh, uh, called Steventon, but I've oh, I know, lived I know in that. Birmingham. I know that. Do you know it? <laughs> no. Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. I had a friend. Um, How did what oh, you know about? Oh, oh. blimey! I, um, I remember it because um, a friend that lives. I used to have a friend who used to live in the centre of Oxford, and she drove me oh, out right. there one day when I was saw her just when she moved to New Zealand, and the car broke down just outside Steventon. I remember it. That's how I remember it. <laughs> How funny! I mean, it's 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 a great little village, and I have I have my my family still down there. Um, but yeah, I uh, then I moved I moved up to Birmingham about nearly twenty years ago now, and I've stayed here ever since. And I now just live on the edge of Birmingham, kind of half countryside, half in the city, which is oh, ideal for me. Oh yeah, I suppose so. We've, we've been in lockdown at the moment as well. And I get that, I'd be obviously like, it's better for like, a person like yourself just to keep safe, basically, doesn't it? You're living somewhere a bit quieter, I suppose. I mean, it's, it's to be honest, the the great thing I've just had a lot. I live on the top of a hill, um, near lots of farm fields and lots of beautiful birds and trees and lots of big space. So for me, it's been that's exactly what I need to kind of keep sane. So that's been really good in terms of the lockdown, definitely. Oh god, yeah, completely with that. So now, obviously, today we're here to talk about your music, which mm. you started on twenty years ago now, and I know you've yeah. recently bought out your sixth solo album. Now, sure. Okay, we'll go all the way back then, because I can see originally you were also called KTB at one point as well, weren't you? I was. So I, I mean, I started writing songs probably when I was about eight or nine, uh, oh, wow. partly because my my older my older brother Robin Bennett um, is a songwriter and he was writing songs and I kind of wanted to be like him, so I wrote songs. And uh, they were pretty bad. The songs I wrote, uh, <laughs> like they were kind of pseudo blues songs with three chords and not much of the truth they were pretty pretty lame songs and then i, I just I, I played guitar and piano i taught myself to play the guitar and listened to a lot of katie lang and patsy klein and the beatles growing up oh, and that's partly from my dad my, my dad was a big big country fan and just generally lots of good music came from my dad and my old brothers as well. So I, I, I had a lot of music. There was a lot of music around growing up. Yeah, I just, and I played my first solo gig. I think I was maybe 16, a little oh. little pub in Oxford. So that was, that's a good, over 20 years ago now. So, wow. yeah. Wow. Been... Were you, how old are you when you started playing your instruments originally then? Were you I like had, eight or nine were you or was it all? I had piano lessons when I was about seven and then cello lessons wow. when I was about eight. So I was very lucky in that I got the opportunity to to learn, you know, your, base, your basics of music when I was pretty young. And it makes me quite sad that so many, so many children at the moment aren't able to do that because of, because of the way things are funding wise with everything. And I, I, yeah, I think music's so vital for little people and I really hope we can get lots more of it in in schools and not and not have it seen as this extracurricular thing that isn't vital when actually it's so important music. Oh no, of course, I get it completely. I want to ask you about Zossi. I know you, you were a finalist, weren't you, in the BBC Young Folk Award when you first started up? I was, yeah. Um, so I I was... Call, I called myself KTB, the three letters K, T and B, for a, quite a long time. Uh, and, until the point where there was there was quite a famous pop singer called KTB, and I had to kind of give up my name. I because, was just uh, about to wonder about that. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I decided you're, you're not her. Not to I knew straight away you weren't her. <laughs> no, no, I'm definitely not her. Um, but yeah, so I yeah, I was in the 
Young Folk Award, but when I was nineteen, so a good nearly twenty years ago, and yeah, it was a re- it was a really great opportunity. And I always find things where anything with music where there's a competition kind of involved is 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 a funny old thing because actually music is shouldn't be a competition and lots of different types of music has value and to compare things is a hard thing but it was a really great opportunity and it gave me a lot of get a lot of raised my profile and gave me a lot of chances to do interesting fun things and I just started a university degree at the time and it was yeah it was it was great and things look set to be kind of going in the right direction at that point yeah now this is obviously I can see here obviously you had that's when obviously you had a few problems didn't you when you got to 20 I can see that from what you've been reading up so and that obviously yeah, that... I, I, yeah so yeah. I am I, um, I I developed some quite severe mental health difficulties when I was about 20 um while I was at while I was studying at university and it was partly because I, I, I came out when I was 20 and I think that was a big shift for me having come, coming out as as gay and and I think that triggered a, triggered a lot of mental health problems and made being a performer really difficult, actually, and made trying to make music hard because I was having so many difficulties in my own life that um, it, I, I couldn't couldn't really go and play lots of gigs and things. It wasn't really a possibility for a while, although I did keep trying to do it. Never. Yeah, it was a, it was a tricky time. <laughs> No, understandable. A friend of mine was 25 when he came out and done the Brighton way, and he was um, making a right. little bit of pianist at the time. And I know for a fact yeah. he, he could barely play for a good three years after that. And took it. Really? Yeah, so it's, I could sympathise straight away with that. So, but like I said, anyway, yeah. more happily, obviously, I know you bought what you said, you bought, you did, you bought out your second album, didn't you? Through the, through so, the yeah, years. Yeah, I, I mean, in, in that time, I, I mean, I have, I, I, I I wrote an album and I, I mean although I was I was having a really hard time I actually was able to write songs and I wrote a lot of songs about that time and I wrote uh, released an album called Bluebird which which kind of did relatively well and actually Rosie who was on the your podcast the other week she um she helped um promote that album for me and it was uh, it it got some really nice reviews and things and so that was that was grand and then I so I, I finished my degree and uh, I got married and I recorded another album back maybe 12 years ago and kind of then kind of decided that maybe I wasn't going to be a songwriter maybe I needed to do something fairly normal and um, a steady job kind of thing and I did that for about 10 years until a few years ago I just suddenly realized actually I just need to be I, I really need I really need to be a be a performer that's what I kind of live for writing yeah. songs and performing songs and I kind of had a bit of an epiphany and changed everything and which is where I am now yeah and no, I can relate to that because myself I I, I obviously I could talk a bit about me here but it's to help you understand mm. what the point I want to raise is I, I bought my first book 10 years ago and yeah. I had a five-year gap for I did the second book because I, I thought that was it after that and it took me to five a few years later and then I thought no it's not that it's not it there's more mm. I want to say and I'm that's the way I want to pick away a go rather than yeah. hide it from myself. And I can see we get to that, that straight away. So, and that's why you've, that's it. You've carried on doing your albums really, haven't you? So yeah, I mean, it, I mean, there was, there were big, there were quite a lot of gaps between I, my, hang on, which one, my fourth album, the songs of the river Ray came out in 2016. It's a great title. Uh, that. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's, the river Ray is this beautiful little river in Birmingham. It's kind of hidden. Not many people know about it. And people don't think of Birmingham as particularly having a river, but we do have a river. And, uh, yeah, and I used to live alongside there, and it's songs about the river and about the community around the river as well. And yeah, I did. I there was quite a big gap between releases because also I was just getting on with life, and it was it was almost like a kind of hobby for a bit, and then I realised it couldn't really be a hobby, and and it was it was making me not very happy, not giving everything towards doing it because it was yeah it was it was one of those those just ch- life changes that kind of had to happen really yeah no, I get, get it completely i know your fifth album came out last year didn't it, in the meantime yeah but obviously like i said i know again unfortunately i understand that you'd had some more health problems aren't you between your fourth and fifth album again and did yeah i mean i'm yeah i mean 
I it's it's interesting. Like it all kind of informs forms what I do, and I, um, yeah, I, I mean, I have I have some ongo ongoing health problems. Um, I have a thing called functional neurological disorder, which is, uh, it's a, quite a strange condition that people don't necessarily know about or under still under like even medically, there's there's kind of lots of gaps in the understanding about about it. But um, it causes me to have um difficulty walking, um, difficult sometimes and difficulty with my legs is how it affects me but but that's an ongoing thing but actually it kind of it also means that sometimes I just have to slow down and pause and stop and there's a benefit to that in having to take life a little bit slower than what I might have tried to do previously so I th I think it's trying to trying to find the things which are positive in a si in situations which are difficult is always is always important I think I think <laughs> that the age sense. thing that I've said for us here because I the age thing here for both of us applies to this case. It's like it's I'm 48, and I know obviously you're younger than me, but you're at the stage in your life where you're looking at it's because you, you've got health problems. I've got my own health problems. Mm. It makes you more focused on what you want to do as a person, and that way yeah. then you're pacing yourself out a lot more. It's I think yeah, definitely. I I have to, I have to I'm probably like you then I I have to. I can't do not not everyone can do everything anyway. But you, but I have to go. Okay, what are the priorities? What are the things I really care about? And I'm going to do them. And the things which I maybe don't care about so much, I'm I just haven't got the energy to do them. I'm not going to be able to do them. That's okay. And going and accepting that you can only do the things that you can manage. Yeah. And there might be other people yeah. running around looking like they're doing all the things, and that's okay too. And they are doing their thing, and you're doing your thing. And I think one thing I've really realised just in the last year is that actually, um, for me, uh, I used I used to be I used to get incredibly kind of envious of other people achieving great things musically when I wasn't doing anything musical myself, and it was partly because I, I'd kind of stopped myself from going and performing and creating. And actually, in the last two three years, I. I do my own thing. I do a lot of creating and a lot of writing, and I and I have no envy of anyone else. And it, maybe occasionally I do, but like it's really it's it's amazing how just acting out the thing that you need to be doing makes you not jealous of other people anymore. If yeah, that makes no, sense, do you completely. Because as a, as you know, I'm a writer myself, and if you do go down mm. the path you're thinking about there, it's it it gets rid of the ego and. As a writer, I've, people I've come across with egos are writers and musicians. It's incredible. Mm. In your case, Sarah, you you've learned to just focus on yourself. I think that's the important thing as an artist. I think anyway, really. Well, also just to like, well, it, it just you're not you're not stopping yourself from doing things. I think before I w I wasn't doing the thing I should have been doing, and so seeing other people act, act self actualizing, if you like, was I found frustrating because I wasn't doing that, and actually now. Doing that myself means that I don't have this. I don't need to be be like somebody else because I'm being me. I'm being the 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 version of me that I want to be. So, yes, that sounds course. like a self help book. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's not. It's far not from too bad. Think. It's not too bad. I, I want to ask you anyway about your fifth album mm. before we come up to the new album. Now, obviously, yeah. I can see. Pardon me. I, I know from reading up on this album, this album was recorded live mostly in first yeah. takes in Bristol with your friend Jim Cornick. Now, mm -hmm. how did the approach of this album go from your previous albums? Because obviously, like, I've, heard, I've heard bits of all your albums now, and mm. it, it's obviously much more raw around than this one. I can say I hear it from the, the tracks I've heard on it. Yeah, I think uh, um, my my relationship had ended and I was in a difficult position, dif difficult place. And I wrote a lot of songs in a short space of time, maybe over the course of maybe five, six months. And and all the songs on that album were kind of around, around from around that time. And I think me and Jim, we spent a baby a day in total, actually wow. just recording. And it was wow. and and it was great because I, with, there was no kind of artifice involved in the recording. It was just voice guitar or voice and piano and just it's like I've just got to get these down I've just got to put them on a record and it and I think it creates a certain mood within the record it's quite cohesive because it's all from within one time and so 
everything feels quite flowing into each other in, in, on that particular album. And yeah, it's of, it's of a certain mood, I suppose. Yeah, it's, and... it's a brave move doing that sort of thing, really, because I've obviously I've heard of cases of artists that have done it not very often. I always think of them. Have you heard of the, the Canadian band, the Cowboy Junkies? I've heard of them. I don't know them yeah, very well. Their second album, the Trinity Session, was done live mm. in a church on one evening. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's, yeah. when you get acts doing that sort of thing, it gives us that sort of, in some ways, that sort of focus, doesn't it? Because you're trying to do it all, just get it all done at one go. Instead yeah, of about 18 and... months doing the album sometimes. Well, well, I mean, that's in stark contrast to, so the previous, the songs of the River A album, which I produced with my brother, Joe Bennett, um, that that we probably recorded that that took maybe took three or four years and it was kind of a weekend every few months or something we would go and record that so it was very kind of sporadic and i'm su- i'm really proud of that album as well but they're very different albums and i think and i think it's just i think it's good to explore different ways and different different moods created by different co- ways of doing things as well yeah i think yeah. every album or release you do whether it's a writer or <coughs> a musician in your case is I think it's great the fact I agree with you that like, each one's got to be different. It's a different beast each one basically. It's almost like yeah. you started from scratch and everything, so you know, it's a great idea. Now, obviously we know your new album's just come out, hasn't it? Yeah. In, just this a month. few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Where does it hurt an introduction to Katie Rose Bennett? The very same. Maybe yeah. you want to go back and I won't say do a great sit, but revit revert. Revisited I mean, it is songs. totally a greatest hits for it's it's a greatest hits for someone who's had no hits basically. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, like essentially, I I think I've been on, I've been on a mentorship program for the last year with a something called the English Folk Expo. Who've been a it's been a, it's a really supportive organisation for folk musicians, and I've had advice and support from from an older mentor who's had a lot of experience in the music industry, and we were kind of figuring out what might be a good thing to do and I I talked about this fact well I've got all these albums and not many people know many of them at all that you know and I've got all these songs and I kind of I want to move on and do more things but I also want to do some kind of celebration of the work that I've done in the last 20 years and actually it's it's kind of going it, it's like going I don't I, uh maybe it's like a kind of green and black chocolate assortment going hey, here's some of the representative of of what this songwriter does see what you like kind of thing and if you if, if you like a particular one you could go and you could go and get that album if you want to but you don't have to you can just this is also exists as a little do you know that you know the green and black's tiny chocolate bars you can get yes. in at least you get 10 in one and it's yeah. just a really nice thing and sometimes that's all you want you just want the 10 little ones from different yeah. different flavors yeah <laughs> i suppose okay. that's it it's kind of it's different fla- it, it's different styles of my writing from like the oldest one is nearly is from 2002 it's a song i wrote um called end of the day and then the newest one is the song i wrote last year called where does it hurt which is the title track so yeah it's a kind of it's kind of to say here here's my music for those who don't know it you know there's plenty of people like if there's people who know it but there's plenty of people who've never heard any of my stuff before do you know what i mean yeah, yeah, I think it's a good way, it's a good way moving for looking backwards to move forward. So, did you find then you had um, I'm not saying I'm not going to ask actually which tracks she or specifically. Did you find you going going through the album? So you're thinking, oh, which track should I put on that album? Or did you find that was that quite a hard process? Was it? Oh, yeah, did you know it was it was it was totally stressful. It was a really stressful it. process because because I thought well I've well I've got five albums. You know, I could should put two songs from each album on the thing, and then maybe a maybe something else as well. You know, just like a kind of rare thing from a you know an old recording or something of something. And then I was and I was thinking, oh no, it doesn't work. This doesn't work. And so actually, I talked to various people, including a, a, a mentor, and and we just got you've just got to, it's just got to, it's a curated list of songs essentially saying this is. The, here is some of my work. It doesn't matter which albums it's from. Like, so there's so the songs of the River Ray. There are four songs from that album, and Bluebird album. There's nothing from it because actually, in the in the flow of the album, it didn't make sense to have it in there. Um, I'm I'm really proud of the Bluebird album, but it it didn't make sense for this album. So it was a it was it was massively stressful. I felt really guilty towards the Bluebird album that I hadn't included any of it. But I also, it's it's like it's kind of like 
having five children and, and and choosing lots from getting the one child to do lots and one child just to not do anything at all, which isn't so kind. But yeah, but they're not children. They're, <laughs> they're pieces of plastic, and yeah, it was it was a it was a it was a painstaking process. For I spent about two months deciding on the track listing. Oh, good luck, Jack. I don't I don't, I don't know if I could do manual situation. I've been like. It would have probably made my hair go white to stress. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, sure. Or to his alcoholics to take your pick on that. No, excellent. That. No. I, I want to yeah. ask you as well then, obviously. Um, yeah. One thing I want to backtrack because I meant to ask you before. Yeah, was, um, right back in the beginning of your days, obviously not long after the Be The Finest Young Folk Award, you performed mm. at the mm. Truck Festival with the 16-piece band. Now, yeah, that was fun. What was that experience like? Because I fronted a six-piece band. And then a sixteen piece yeah. that must have been absolutely incredible. Yeah, it was it was brilliant. It was um it was headlining on the Sunday afternoon, I think, of the Truck Festival, which is in Steventon, which you may know. Um it's a really great festival, it's still going on. It's a bit even it's bigger now than it used to be. And uh my main I was I was kind of terrified because I was there was six it was six it was the first time I I played with that many people, although I have since played with the with a big kind of band. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, um, I mean, it was quite a long time ago now. And yeah, you've slept since but then. It was, <laughs> I have slept since then. So good, 18 years ago, I think. And yeah, it was, it was just really fun. And there's something really powerful um, fronting a large group of musicians or, you know, really talented players creating and like, you know, so amplifying your songs in a way. So I, I do a lot of playing on my own and actually playing with other people is one of the most joyful things you can do really. And that, yeah. So I think more than anything, just pure, like just joy of going, the of, of creating the songs <laughs> live. Brilliant. Okay. A couple of things to finish off with now is obviously, I like, always like to ask people is sure. what plans do you have next? Then? Do you sure. have a, um, what's, yeah. going next? what's planned after this then? Well, at the moment, actually today and all this week, I'm in a, I'm in, I'm doing a residency in my own home. I'm doing a virtual residency with the English Folk Dance and Song Society at Cecil Sharp House, but not actually there because I couldn't get to London because of lockdown. But I'm, I'm doing a research project in my house uh, at home using their library archive, and I'm developing the beginnings of a, a song, spoken word, and theatre piece, which is called Ooh. Worry Face. And it's about uh, FND, my experience of FND, which is, sorry, my phone's being weird, apologies. Uh, it's, it's about my experience of FND, the functional neurological disorder, and, uh, but told in, it. yeah, it's exploring that using song and using old folk songs and lyrics and lyrical structures of old folk songs to inform my practice. So that's that's been amazing this week actually it's been really fun and I've been collaborating with a theatre maker called Francesca Millican Slater which has been brilliant so that's amazing. one thing oh brilliant <laughs> yeah and and doing lots of writing and and working with some just working with some dancers a, a dancer on a place she's creating about called called postpartum which is about being um, a mum and being a dancer and I'm creating music and song for that so yeah lots of lots of projects happening and yeah lots in the pipeline Brilliant. do you envisage you'll have another album out in the next year or two or I'd say probably I'm going to be I'm going to be releasing new music in the new year and 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 I'm yeah I'm I'm, I'm working I'm working to with a with a group of musicians and friends and we're going to be getting uh, hopefully a new record towards the end of next year or the beginning of 2022 fingers crossed you fingers know, crossed for you fingers crossed with all the with all everything that's going on right now in the world but it's i think i think more than anything music is just so important though to for people's mental health for people getting people through these times and and i really hope that that musicians and artists and creative folks get as much support as they need to to keep going and keep keep creating Perfect. You know, I can completely agree with you now, now, Katie. Now, to conclude this first part, if mm. people want to find out more about you, where would the best sure. going? Probably katierosebennett.com. That's Katie with a Y and double N, double T for the Bennett. And 
yeah, they've got lots of lots of info on there. And also I'm on Twitter and Katie Bennett, K letter K letter T Bennett. And also on Instagram and I've got a Facebook page so you can find me on there and sp- um, you can listen to my music on Spotify if that's your deal. And also I'm on Bandcamp and YouTube as well. Brilliant. And people can pick up your music what in all reputable a- areas, basically, I would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in whichever way you like to get your music, you can pretty much get hold of it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okie dokie now. That's all my cool. questions. So I know we're going to take a quick break and do a few songs for us in the cool. second half. So. Nice right. one. What what songs would you like? Ooh, what, what kind? How should, many? Should we, should, we, should we sort this out off mic? Okay, let you get yourself prepared. Okay, <laughs> we're still on mic. Right, guys and girls, bear with us. We're back in two minutes. Take care. Thanks again, Katie. Spoke on me. Hi guys. Okay, dokie. Straight over to Katie. Looking forward to this. Over to you, Katie. Ah, oh, thank you. This is a song of mine. Uh, which is coming out as a single tomorrow or whichever day is it's coming out as a this is a song of mine it's a single it came out on friday the 13th of november and it's called cold november day it's a song about love and grief and about my old my my wonderful granny the mist rising from the river rain Hangs around most of the day And I haven't followed the heron home Since the end of September This is the day they tell us to Think of those gone before they're due I can only think of you i not forget to remember You're still here In the air around us The mist, the rain, the snow Still here in the earth beneath us, the lattices we grow. Still here in the words we say and the love we hide away till we meet again some cold November day. We sat silent in the atrium. Listening to the freezer hum The babies laugh and Barry's crockery Till the tannoy marked the ending Then we all return to our daily bread Forgetting what our hearts just said And if this is how you really feel You better stop pretending Oh, you're still here In the air around us The mist, the rain, the snow Still here in the earth beneath us, the lattices we grow. Still here in the words we say, and the love we hide away, till we meet again some cold November day. I still see you sometimes, I still hear you sometimes. Sometimes I still need you sometimes You're still here by my side The mist rising from the river ray Hangs around most of the day And I haven't followed the heron home Since the end of September you're still here in the air around us, the mist, the rain, the snow. Still here in the air beneath us, the lattices we grow. Still here in the words we say and the love we hide away till we meet again some cold November day. Oh, till we meet again some cold November day. Oh, till we meet again some cold November day. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, that. It's time of recording obviously um it's quite interesting because it's not actually that cold in november day today but that did make me shiver i know it's quite nice (laughs) 
<laughs> is that uh, anyway? Obviously, you know yourself, like November time, it can be really, really erratic weather wise, can't it? But it's not a bad day today, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty anyway. nice here, actually, yeah. Really haunting. No, it's, it's written on. Um, it's written on November the eleventh. So it's but yeah, it's a written it, inspired by remembrance, but also going. I like whenever it's remembrance day. I always and obviously you think of the, you think of people who've lost their lost their lives in in war. But also I always just find myself thinking of all the people I you know all the people you've lost, and that's kind of the people I remember often on those days. Yeah, I think I can get completely that. That's beautiful. Okay, I know you're going to um, do another one for us now, aren't you? So, so yeah, this next song I'm going to do is a song called Where Does It Hurt, which is the title track of my latest album. And it's a song that was inspired by an interview I heard on a podcast with the civil rights campaigner Ruby Sales. And she talks about she talks about her work as a civil rights activist, but also just trying to bring people together and connect people and so this song is really about about connection and about trying to trying to reach someone who might be closed off and just trying to trying to support someone and also opening opening ourselves and being empathic and yeah that's kind of what it's about it's called where does it hurt Sadness, where is the shame? 
Beautiful, beautiful, Katie. Really, really enjoyed it. Hypno hypnotic as well, so fantastic. Oh, cheers, Andy. Cheers. Right. Oh. Anyway, guys and girls, this has been fantastic today. It's been a magical session. Thank you again, Katie, for saying really, really enjoyed this. Hang around. I need to speak to you off mic, as I do to everybody. But take care, guys and girls. Thank you, Katie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Andy. Cheers. Take care, guys and girls. I'll see you all soon.